Hello everybody! This is The Spa here, and welcome to a Five Nights at Freddy's explanation video. This is the first one of these on my channel, and depending on how much I enjoy this video, I'll see how much I'll be willing to continue creating these. I'll assume that you have a basic understanding of FNAF already. What we have today is I'm going to be taking a deeper dive on each of the FNAF protagonists of each of the traditional games. There, I'm going to explain just who they are exactly. I've seen quite a few interpretations and conflict opinions on who the protagonists of these games actually are, and it's led to a lot of confusion and conflicting theories. I hope that by making this video, I'll finally be able to fully set the record straight by using the most evidence that I can muster up. Or possibly that you could link somebody to a part of this video whenever somebody believes that somebody else is the protagonist of any certain game. Of course, none of these are set in stone, but I'm hoping that you'll at the very least be able to see my point of view when it comes to all of these. So, without further ado, I'll be starting it off with our very first game, Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Warning. Please know that this video will contain spoilers for the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I assume that you already know a lot about Five Nights at Freddy's if you're watching this, but it's good to be concerned that you've played all the games beforehand, or at least aren't concerned with being spoiled. I have a goal to provide knowledge to a brand new generation of young men and women. Anyone who's watching this video is more than welcome to this knowledge. This will be very difficult if there's any dilly-dallying during this video, so I please request your humble attention throughout the entire project. All questions will be taken in the comments below, so please comment. Anyways, I thank you for all of your cooperation, so please sit back and enjoy. Also subscribe. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, you can quite clearly see on the paycheck that the character you play as goes by the name of Mike Schmidt. We can safely assure that Mike Schmidt is the same person as Michael Afton, by the way, and the biggest piece of evidence that supports this is a survival lockbook. This book is owned by Mike Schmidt and it references the show The Immortal and the Restless. We also know for a fact that the FNAF 5 protagonist is Michael Afton, and he watches this show every night after work. So why else would the book make a reference to this? Additionally, the book makes many references such as exotic butters and casual bongos, which were jokes that only the FNAF 5 protagonist would be able to know. It's quite hard to see why anybody would still believe that we play as a rando in FNAF 1 despite all of this evidence. So it's pretty much cut and dry over here. Furthermore, the end of the week termination notice for Mike Schmidt cites one of the causes as odor. Perhaps this choice was retrospectively explained by his undead rotting corpse. This just seems to make the most sense lined up with everything that we know. Moving on to Five Nights at Freddy's 2, you can also easily see the name of the protagonist being Jeremy Fitzgerald. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that points to this person being any more than just some random worker though. However, it's important to know that many people consider Jeremy to be the bite victim of the Bite of 87. Yeah, it could be him, but there's really no real evidence for that. It's honestly just pure conjecture. I think most people likely say this because they want Jeremy to have a more significant part in the story, but honestly, the bite victim could be anybody. This is really entirely trivial though, so the Night 7 protagonist, Fritz Smith. He might just be someone that nobody really knows, like Jeremy, but... I believe that this is another alias of Michael Afton, given how the higher-ups would definitely not be willing to hire just anybody with the last name Afton. This makes the most logical sense given how Michael would likely take Fritz from Fitzgerald, and Smith is a generically common last name, so an alias right on the spot. It could also be that both Fritz and Mike have the exact same termination reasons with Odor, given how Michael's kind of a rotting corpse right now, and there's little reason for this to be a coincidence. Both of them have the same knowledge of how to tamper with electronics as well, so it would be really good to have someone that's well traversed in the company's animatronic works. Not to mention, they didn't hear any of Phone Guy's phone calls, so if they were just coming here out of nowhere, they'd have no idea how the hell they'd survive, and they'd just die on the spot since they don't know about the Freddy mask, they don't know about the puppet, there's so much you have to do in Finance Freddy's 2 just to keep alive. But, if this was Michael Afton, it'd make a lot more sense for why this guy is actually surviving all of this. Beep. 
All right, so Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is where things start to get a little bit more complicated, since we just don't have a clear name. At least that's what most people think. Unlike the previous two games, there isn't just a paycheck provided after you beat the Night 5 that just says the player's name. So, I've seen a couple people say that the protagonist is actually Henry Emily, given how the FNAF 3 building burns down at the end. I'm gonna be honest, this actually convinced me for a little while, but I feel like the concept of the hallucinations kinda weighs this theory down. The fans just seem to represent Mike's memory more than Henry's, and it'd be a lot more sensible if Mike was the protagonist. So, just like the first two games, Michael often seems to work best for this position in particular, and, well, it'd just be best for him as a whole, since he's trying to track down his father during this whole thing, and he's the one that'd actually be willing to find these crazy jobs. After all, Phone Dude specifically said glad you could come here for another night, so this guy definitely worked in the past. Alright, here we get to the big one. Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Alright, I see a lot of different debates on who the actual protagonist is for this one. And there's a lot of debate in the community if it's Michael Afton or Evan Afton. I'll just be calling him Evan Afton. This was actually my main motivation for making this video since I fully, completely, 100% believe that the character that you play as is Michael Afton. First of all, the biggest supporting evidence for this fact is when you play the night transitioning minigames of Five Nights at Freddy's 4, it's quite clear how Evan's room isn't the one that we play as. I've heard some people consider this to be just nothing more than a mistake, but I heavily doubt that's the case. The Five Nights at Freddy's 4 room is rather confusing in a design perspective, but this gives it a little bit of extra information since we can tell that the room existed and that Evan had the room up until he died. Another extremely obvious connection is that how, in the logbook, Mike Schmidt, who we know is Michael Afton by the way, draws a little picture of Nightmare Fredbear. There he also talks about his recent dreams, which we know couldn't have happened if Evan was the protagonist. It's important to keep in mind that Bite Victim was most likely tormented by the nightmares where we don't see it at some point, but that's besides the point. That's not what we're trying to argue with right now. This means that the logbook supports that those events of Five Nights at Freddy's 4 are in fact a dream, and that Michael Afton is also an adult when these dreams take place for him. Not to mention, there's also the easter egg about the reverse Five Nights at Freddy's 1 phone call, which is rather important by the way. This is because it happens on any possible night, any at all. The logbook asks about this purple phone being a childhood toy, and Michael replies. Given how the phone was seen in the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 room, it only makes sense that this is happening to Michael. This implies that these nightmares happen around the same time at Five Nights at Freddy's 1, due to these nightmares being just so recent. However, in Five Nights at Freddy's 5, it shows that the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 house actually contains real animatronics, so it's rather difficult to put a precise pinpoint on this. I do find that the layout makes sense though given how the two doors leading to one bedroom is really rather strange in any household. I don't know man, like I said, Five Nights at Freddy's just really doesn't have these room perspectives as its strongest suit. I mean, just look at Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and its lack of a kitchen. These strange layouts just don't make much sense at all. But I do think it's quite clear that the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 layout is meant to parallel this. I mean, Bonnie comes out the same side, so does Chica. It's quite clearly connected. So yes, we know from Sister Location that this room is actually real, but it is still likely that what we play as comes from a dream. I also believe that it's meant to resemble Five Nights at Freddy's 2 in a way as well, just not strongly though. Given how the Plush Trap minigames room resembles the four party rooms in the FNAF 2 hallway, yeah I'll admit that's just a little bit muddled, but I think it makes the most sense since it's clearly not the crying child's room. I'll be the first to admit, yeah that's a little bit just really hammering the point that that's not the crying child's rooms. Just what kind of house just has four doors in that little hallway like that? I just think it could be some kind of resemblance of FNAF 2. So it really has to be Michael Afton, regardless of whatever time period that you believe. 
There is also the important information about the ultimate guide, how it states how the crying child is the FNAF 4 protagonist. Well, some people see this as the end all be all, but I still believe it's Mike because there's just so many contradictions and so many flaws in the ultimate guide to begin with. I think it could still be referring to Michael Afton there too. Too much of the book is just objectively incorrect for it to be trustworthy, such as how Vanny might be tape girl. And states information about how the shadow animatronics help children, I just, that's not true in the slightest. Seriously, the book even goes against how Scott said Phone Guy is not the killer, and the book claims that's a responsibility, so yeah. The ultimate guide can't be trusted. Don't look for it as a definitive answer, please. Like, if you do that in any FNAF theory, you'll probably be ridiculed. I just made this beforehand because I knew that I'd at least get one person telling me that I'm going against the ultimate guide, which I just really can't trust that thing. Sure, it supports some theories, but the amount of inconsistencies just really does not line up. We know that Mike's the protagonist for a long time, basically over a year at this point, and there's just too much to go against this to prove that this is really anything of note. Alright, one more thing before we move on, I want to bring up the issue about the frontal lobe. This was actually brought up a lot during the really early days of FNAF theorizing, and it's just not as important now, although I feel I should at least mention it. There was that whole theory about how it can't be the crying child having these nightmares because the whole frontal lobe and not being able to have them. There's also the issue with the pills, because you don't give pills to coma patients. Something else I want to bring up is one that a lot of people actually forget. It's about Plush Trap and the Fun with Plush Trap minigame. A lot of people just find it to be just some kind of random thing that's only a gameplay element, but I feel this even further proves that it has to be Michael, because who else would see Springtrap? It would be Michael because of FNAF 5, or Sister Location, and we already know that, because this takes place during FNAF 1, and Sister Location took place before FNAF 1. He's having these nightmares around this time. He's having these nightmares because of the guilt that he had because he killed his younger brother, or that's what he believes, he believes that it was all his fault. He wants to outdo his wrongs and just want to fix all of his father's mishaps and all his crimes that he's committed in the past. This would make Plush Trap the kind of nightmare version of Spring Trap. I know that seems kind of weird because it's small and it doesn't really seem like a nightmare, but he's pretty related to the rest of the nightmares in terms of design points. He's definitely meant to be some kind of nightmarefication or being that he's still so traumatized by this and since he'll never truly know if his brother will ever forgive him for what he's done no matter how much he tries to correct his wrongs that he's committed in the past. Anyway, on a lighter note we're going to talk about how the FNAF world protagonist is actually Bite Victim. This is because he was asked about Happiest Day in place to help the others to be set free. And it would only make sense for it to be Vite Victim. We know that the protagonist is there and was made for the sole purpose of getting the clocks. The game says, you were made for one thing after all, so I think it would have to be Bite Victim slash Crying Child. Alright, so after that, it's much more smooth sailing. FNAF 5 is ever confirmed to be Michael Afton, so there's no discussion that needs to be had there. It also helps uh, if you believe that FNAF 5 takes place before FNAF 1 and 2, but that's a whole nother can of worms, but I believe that FNAF 1 takes place before. So I'll just move on how to say FNAF 6 is easily Michael Afton as well. Given how Henry won everybody in one place, it really only would make sense that Michael would be there. No one else quite fits the bill like him. He saw the job opportunity not intended for him, and it easily fits in as right where you want to be described. Otherwise, it would just be some random guy that would have actually gotten out, but we know that Henry says he didn't want to come out. It would only make sense for Michael to want to die with the others anyway. He would just wants his soul to be at some kind of rest. Nobody quite fits this description better than Michael. Anyways, that's all from me. I really hope that I was able to convince any of you watching this or not on my stance as who's the protagonist. And, well, if you could possibly link this and supporting your own case on who's the protagonist, 
I'd be happy to give you permission to do that. It would be a great help to have my theory spread around. So, I would love to try and hear any feedback or evidence that you might have. It could be positive or negative that either supports my claims or goes against it on who you think the protagonist of each game is. Well, depends on the argument. You could give me the most hot takes you can. I'm more than happy to hear anything that either supports or goes against my stance. Anyways, if you like this video, please, please, please leave a like and also subscribe. You would not believe how much it helps channel growth. Once you make videos of your own, yeah, you'll see how much it helps. So, that's all for now, and I hope that I could see you again in one of my future videos. I'll see you around.